slashing its way to comic book stores. Today we're going to be having a look at the Funko Horror Five Star Jason Voorhees. A new line of cute miniature collectibles from Funko. This is the Camp Crystal Lake Killer, one of four figures to be released under the Horror Five Star line. It's note the first thing that I want to mention about these particular figures is they're really small. How small exactly? Well, the best way to answer that is we'll take the Ultra Megatron 5000, put it to the very top of Jason Voorhees' head, to tell us that the figure is a very tiny 3.5 inches in height. Somebody yells from the back, show us centimeters, show us centimeters. All right, showing you in centimeters, you're looking at 8.9, about 9 centimeters. Jason Voorhees gets himself two accessories, one of which being an axe, and the axe is passable. You know, it doesn't have a whole lot in the way of the handle, it's just a painted brown handle with a silver axe head. Uh, paint is, like I said, very minimal, there's not really a whole lot to say about it. They've no I've noticed that they've kept the blood off the blade, whereas the machete over here is heavily saturated in blood, but the machete also doesn't hold in his hands. Yes, you can take the axe, and the axe quite easily fits into Jason Voorhees' hand, by either hand, actually. Fits in place, it's not going anywhere. Take it off of his other, put it into his other hand, on the other hand, and put it into that hand, yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem whatsoever. Let's talk the machete, however. The machete is a completely different beast altogether, for starters, the handle on the brown of the axe has now been swapped out here for black on the machete. The machete also has some additional blood that's been added to it. Ironically enough, where he slashes is still pretty clean. This one little line of silver. Almost as if they couldn't go in there and finish that in red. Okay, that's a small thing. We're not going to nitpick the level and placement of blood saturation on a machete. But I tell you, one thing we could talk about is the handle. What is going on with the handle here? For starters, if I'm not, I'm no knife expert, uh, probably a good idea that I'm not, but does not the handle of the machete with the slight point, should that not be the bottom of the machete? And yet if you look at the blade, the blade you would likely hold it like this. Okay, well I'm not gonna dissect the placement of the handle. Maybe there are machetes that have that little point on the top rather than on the bottom. My biggest problem with it though, is he doesn't have the means to hold it. Here, hold this for a second. If you look at the machete, look how broad that handle is. In fact, actually the whole machete is a fairly wide looking weapon of mass destruction. If you look at it, however, placed in his hand, his hand doesn't properly have the means to grip it. You can't force it because there just isn't enough clearance in his hand. His hand isn't wide enough. Yells out the back of the audience. Well, what if you put it sideways? Well, it doesn't actually... Here, I'll hold it like this. If you put it sideways, I'm pressing, 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 pressing. It doesn't, it doesn't stain his hand. Let's, let's put it in this way. I'm pushing it in. It, it doesn't stay in place. Okay, so let's try the other hand. Well, we know it can't go this way, because look at how wide the handle is. Push, push, push. Force, force, force. I don't certainly want to break the thumb, having enough experience with G.I. Joe thumbs to know how that well will go. Okay, so let's put it sideways. Again, sideways, it doesn't fit far enough back into his hand, so his hand doesn't hold it properly. As a result, the machete falls off. You had one job, Machete. You had one job. Okay, so we know that the Machete is lousy. 
I don't know what they had planned. I don't know why they simply couldn't have made the handle smaller. I mean, they've done it for the axe. It's not like both the weapons have the, the problem. I mean, even if you look at the axe, which we've already discussed, I know I'm kind of going back and retreading what I said. Okay, we've established this holds perfect in, Jason, in Jason's hand. So why, let's put it next to this one, why would you have almost twice, almost another, almost another half, it's almost twice, it's twice the thickness, twice the width of the handle of the axe. We know the, ha the axe holds well, so why is the machete twice as thick? Oh, I got a headache. Okay, so let's look at the figure itself, excluding the accessories. In all honesty, I have to come clean about something. I don't really get what this line is supposed to be. Now, you know Funko saturates, saturates at an obscene level, saturates comic book stores and retail stores with various different plastic collectibles. So you've got the go-to, the default, the vinyl figures, the pop vinyl figures. We've already gotten a Jason Voorhees for that. There's also Dorbs, which are kind of sort of the same size, roughly about the same size as this, but they're a little bit more stylized. Then you've got the vinyl figures. That would be V, Y, N, L, S figures, which we've already had a look at Jason and, and, uh, and uh, Freddy, which was a two pack. I already had a look at those on this channel. I guess this is a, to the market of somebody that wants a super, super deformed, super cute version of Jason Voorhees that has some minimal levels of posability. In fact, we can even talk about that right now. His arms move back and forth. He has nothing in the hands and his head rotates. So that's about the same as what we would get with the vinyl figures. That would be exactly the same as what we also would get with the pop vinyl figures. So really, what is this market for? There are four figures from the set, Chucky, Pennywise, uh, Freddy Krueger, and Jason Voorhees. There's four of them. There might actually be another wave after this. I decided to start with Jason Voorhees because, of course, I'm a big fan of Jason. Okay, so the accessories don't quite work. I'm still perplexed as to what this line is catering towards. There's probably somebody out there that is asking for this. Are they? Anyways, let's look, have a look at the head sculpt. I can tell you right off the bat, like the mask doesn't remove. If you thought it was gonna remove, you would be crazier than a fox. I don't even know where that saying comes from, crazy like a fox, but the mask is not removable. It sort of kind of looks like those, you know, keepsake dolls, you know, the ones if you go to a, a card store and they're always in like a glass cabinet, there's the cherished teddies, and then there's those little kid keepsakes Obviously, you would never find this particular keepsake with those keepsakes, but I get about the same sort of vibe when I'm looking at it. To its credit, the paint is good. The mask is acceptable, passable, if you will, and I like that the eyes are slightly, one eye is a little bit closed than the other. Very crystal blue, almost like crystal lake blue, uh, blue eyes on Jason Voorhees. He's got the chevrons there on the sides and on the top. Kind of, we can guess that this is part three Jason, but really there's no damage to his mask or to him. It's relatively clean. I, for some strange reason, have silver on the top. I don't know what, what happened there. I guess they were painting here and the brush hit the top. I, I don't really know. The brown is pretty somewhat clean. And then, of course, you got the lower half. I mean, my, my one positive, I would say, about this line is that they're small and they're well painted other than a few little you know hiccups here and there he's got the little even little buttons on his shirt all painted in there the little button on his pocket also painted in and they've done a pretty good job on like the boots and the pants but still i'm kind of under not really understanding what this line is gearing towards that somebody is maybe out there asking themselves for the longest time geez i wish there was a cute version of Jason Voorhees that was small, that was posable, and could be released by Funko with some accessories. I feel like it's kind of like the next evolutionary step up from the vinyl figures, but again, I don't understand why we needed this line. Accessories really don't work on him, other than if you want to keep the axe in his hand. And even though he is cute, I just don't personally get it. I'm, I'm a lot better than this, usually getting stuff. Even some of the things that 
other viewers, I'm sure, scratching their heads would be thinking, why would anybody be interested in these? I try to find the positives in everything that I review. Normally, I would find positive in this, but I just ask myself, for all the other stuff that Funko is releasing, I don't get what this line is supposed to be. A more posable, which it isn't, a more accessorized, which really doesn't work on the figure, you're ultimately just kind of getting a cute version of Jason Voorhees. I guess that's enough for the price of admission, but I'm curious as to how many people would actually source out and pick up this line. You know, there's a good possibility that I might have just missed it. You know, it. In quotes, it. The thing that decides whether a collectible is worth picking it up or not. Sort of the charm that collectibles have possessed. Maybe I just don't get it, and I've yet to find it. By the way, it is part of this line. Pennywise is one of them. But I'm looking at Jason Voorhees first, as a personal love of Jason Voorhees and Friday the 13th. I happen to also think he's one of the best figures from the four figures that we are going to look at from the five-star horror lineup. I think he's a lot better than Freddy. He's better than Pennywise, and I think he's even better than Chucky. So that's why I wanted to start with him first. I guess he delivers what he needs to as a poseable, smaller, cuter version of Jason. But again, I, I don't get it. If you get it, let me know down below in the comments section if you find this line as appealing. It could also be for the fact that maybe if this was released by a toy company that wasn't already saturating the markets with everything else, oh my god, they put out so much stuff. I would probably have a better feeling towards this. But I guess maybe it's just that they put out so much stuff. You walk in into a comic book store, and Funko is, is what you see as far as the eye can see. Maybe I just ask myself so much the question of, I don't get it, more than I don't get why Funko released this, when they've already sort of cornered the market with every incarnation of character in every version of collectible figure that could possibly be released. Oh, I'm burnt out by Funko. Still, though, if you guys like this line, let me know down below in the comments section. Maybe I'm just being too hard on it. Maybe, again, if it was released by another company. Maybe even if, say, I took Funko off of this review altogether and just called it the five-star horror figures. Say if even NECA released this, maybe I would have a stronger feeling towards it as NECA normally releases, you know, more realistic figures. They tend not to go into the cutesy market. So if they released a cutesy version of Jason Voorhees, being what I have to compare it against, this would make sense. But Funko's already kind of covering off all this stuff. They're doing the vinyl figures. They're doing the pop figures. They're doing the dorbs. Is anyone even buying dorbs anymore? I just don't personally get why Funko had to release this lineup. A cuter version of horror characters may have worked well with other manufacturers, but for me, it doesn't work with Funko, who's already been there, who's already done that. Either way, guys, let me know down below what you guys think of these figures. We're going to, again, have a look at the other three. So that's coming up. That's something to look forward to. In the meantime, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below, because certainly more videos will be coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Not finding it, I guess. I have to find it. Anyways, guys, I'll see you next time.